Hey there everybody, so today I'm going to be starting up a tutorial series on Perfect Team, in particular how to improve your capital, uh, in particular as a free-to-play player, and try to build the best team possible without really investing into the game. So this is going to be for just about anybody who really wants to get everything they can out of the game and optimize uh, they're playing essentially to try to build the best team possible. So while I have had this team together since launch, I've done nothing with it. I've basically left it and uh, they're just sitting here really. I do have 150,000 perfect points, but I'm not actually going to be playing this game actively like you guys will be with your main teams, I assume. So uh, those will be there really to just spend. As we go along more than anything else, I'm not going to be using them to pick up like some ridiculous player or anything like that. I'll just use them to show you stuff as we're going through the tutorials. So anyways, today we're going to start out the first tutorial with Perfect Draft. So in my opinion, Perfect Draft is the easiest way for new players to start building capital. Well, besides uh, building a really strong team quickly in main league play, which we'll get to uh, at a later time. And Perfect Draft is... Uh, you don't have to have any skills to do it. You don't have to have any cards to do it. And that's really the important thing. You just have to sign up and draft your team. And that's really all there is to it. So uh, anybody, as I've been saying, can do it. it the competition level is even between all uh, levels of talent on your base teams, all levels of card collections, etc. The boundaries are even. It's kind of luck-based based on what cards you get, obviously. But... Uh, that can play into your favor as well. So, uh, anyways, we're going to be going over the basics of Perfect Draft today and some of my personal strategies. Now, I'm probably not the best in the world at Perfect Draft, but I do have a really good win rate. I probably win like 60-65% of my Perfect Draft games. Maybe not quite that high, but uh, I do generally do quite well. So, basic information on Perfect Draft is where we're going to start today. Um, you get... 13 rounds. There are 13 rounds of perfect draft. You have one perfect round, two diamond rounds, three rounds each in gold, silver, and bronze, and one round for iron. So that's, again, 13 rounds in total. You have one selection in each of your first three rounds. So you get one perfect card and two diamond cards. You get uh, two selections in the gold, silver, and bronze rounds. So uh, accounting for the number of each you have, you get six cards uh, in each of those rounds. And you get five selections in the iron round. That'll be for a total of 26 cards. You get six cards to choose from in the first three rounds. And 12 cards in the rest of the rounds. So um, that's in the perfect of diamond rounds, you'll get a selection of six cards. In every other round, you'll have a selection of 12 cards. And you get to choose the either one card, two cards, or five cards from that group of cards. And um, the total number of cards you'll have available is 138. There is a 20-minute time limit once you click the Start Drafting Now button, but that really should be a non-factor for you, even if you're going uh, slowly through your drafts. You'll see I complete my drafts in about five minutes. Now, I'm pretty fast, but um, even as you're first getting started, that 20 minutes shouldn't be too much of an issue for you. I do recommend looking through thoroughly at every player because, again, I don't think that 20 minutes is a problem. And especially when you're unfamiliar with the players, it's better to get familiarized. Uh, it'll help you learn who they are. And, of course, you will actually get to have a better idea of who you're drafting. And you get 10 players at each position on the field. So that's first baseman, you get 10. Second baseman, you get 10. Third baseman, you get 10. Shortstops, you get 10. Uh, catchers, you get 10. Left fielders, you get 10. Center fielders, you get 10. Right fielders, you get 10. Uh, those are what you have available. And you also get... 26 starting pitchers and 32 relievers. So again, that's a total of 138 cards you have available to choose from. Obviously, uh, you're going to be selecting. The idea is that you want to build a complete team. You don't want to leave a position out. That'll kind of hinder your success rates. All right, so before we get into the draft, I'm going to convey some of my more important strategies. And then as we go through, I'll explain what I'm doing and why I'm choosing to draft certain players, things like that. So just a few general draft strategies. Uh, what you want to be thinking about is how much better is the player going to be that I'm drafting right now than what I could expect going forward. So there's a couple of things with this. First of all, you're generally going to want to draft the best players available. That's uh, the strategy most people go with. 
because they are obviously going to stand out from the field. But there's more to it. If there's a position you know is going to be strong later in the drafts, or at least less weak, so in my opinion, that's going to be left field and second base are the two deepest positions going into the draft. And you have two comparable players. You might go with the player at a stronger position. And in my opinion, shortstop is the weakest, most shallow position. So if you get a really strong shortstop in the early rounds, you almost have to go for that shortstop. Um, you also have to, because again, you have a limit on how many numbers of each players you're getting. As I said, there's 10 for each position, 26 starting pitchers, and 32 relief pitchers. So if you're starting to run a little bit low on one position, you might want to really keep your eye out for somebody strong because uh, you might be running out of possibilities to get a good player at that position. Now, another thing to consider with this is you can find players who are playing out of position or are eligible at multiple positions and you can move them around. Um, but overall, that, that yeah, you want to get the best players relative to everybody else more than you want to just get the best players. Um, but you do also want to get the best players, obviously, and that is a big part of who is going to be better than everybody else at their position. Another thing, you should almost never be drafting relievers in the first couple rounds, like through silver. Pretty much do not draft relievers. The bullpen is less important. Uh, the caliber of relievers you're going to see going through the draft drops off more slowly than the caliber of any other position on the field. You could still get decent relievers in the bronze round. That's not really true of any other position on the field except maybe left field. Um, but yeah, so there is that. Uh, another thing, you have 15 selections. 15 selections. I no, is that yeah? You you have 15 selections through the silver round. So. Again, you have three really good selections with the perfect and the two diamonds, and you have 12 selections for the gold, silver, and bra or yeah, gold and silver combined. So those are going to be your top players generally in those areas. That's enough for you to draft one player at every position on the field and your entire starting rotation, along with one spare. Now another thing here that I'm going to point out. Catchers, also, you can generally find good catchers later in the draft. So if you don't take a catcher going into the bronze rounds, that's completely fine. You can find good catchers in the bronze and iron rounds. Um, so you really have two free spots there. Eight starters, five starting pitchers, two free slots. Uh, more often than not, you will probably be taking a catcher before the bronze round. But you can go without one, and it will hurt you less than almost any other position. All right, now on to more specific strategies here. So it's generally better to draft batters in the first three rounds of the draft. Uh, there is not too much separation from the average diamond and perfect pitchers than from the gold pitchers, and not too much from the gold and silver pitchers either. You can find quality pitchers in the gold and silver rounds, no problem. Um, but the hitters, there's a significant separation between the hitters you're going to see in your diamond and perfect rounds and the hitters you're going to see in the gold rounds. So... Uh, again, I strongly recommend targeting hitters. I probably have a 90% hitter target rate in the first three rounds of the draft. Um, I found that strategy to be pretty successful. Now, if you find a dominant pitcher, of course, a really, really strong starting pitcher, and you don't really have any obvious standout hitters, then it makes sense to go with the pitcher because, again, they're going to have more marginal value than the hitter would. But that's not really an often, often the case. You should really only be drafting relievers if everybody else is complete garbage and the reliever is really good. Uh, like I said, relievers, there is much less separation between the best and worst relievers than there is at any other position. And it's just not worth it to draft somebody who's hardly going to be playing on your team so early most of the time. Um, now, with that said... Once you start getting into the gold round, it makes more sense to target starting pitching. You're going to see fewer dominant hitters. You're going to see more strong pitchers relative to the number of options you have available. And you do want to make sure you've got a good rotation still. That is important. So you want to have as many starting pitchers as you can through the gold round. It's not a bad strategy to take five starting pitchers and one hitter in the three gold rounds. 
and you definitely want to make sure at least 90% of the time to have your entire rotation selected through the silver round because after silver, there is a huge drop-off in the caliber of starting pitchers that you will have available to you, and that is really important to keep in mind. Um, you will... It's extremely rare to end up with a strong bronze pitcher. It's very lucky if you happen to get one, and uh, if you do, you're generally going to want to put them in the bullpen anyways. So position versatility, it's huge. Uh, if you see a batter who could competently play multiple positions, so guys like Deacon White, for example, who plays uh, like third base, first base, and I think one of the corner outfield spots, that's more valuable than somebody who just plays one position. Because again, in perfect draft, you don't know what's coming up. Now you have an idea of what positions you're going to see going forwards, but you do not know who they're going to be. You don't know if they're going to be decent players, or if they're going to be garbage. So... If you get a great first baseman and you've got uh, Deacon White at first base over, say, uh, Justin Morneau. And now if you've got Justin Morneau, you've got to use that DH slot. But if you've got Deacon White, now you can move him to a different position at the field and he'll still be able to play for you without uh, using up your DH slot, which you really only have for one spare batter. So as for later round strategies... Um, if you get a strong reliever available in the bronze rounds or in the iron rounds, you have got to draft him. Um, relievers are definitely the strongest position available in those bronze rounds. It's going to be very rare for you to end up with a good start in another position. And again, uh, filling up that bullpen with high caliber arms is going to be more important than getting backups at first because you just do not have anybody to cover those um, innings. Additionally, you are more likely to get a decent backup in the iron round than you are to get a decent reliever. So this comes to the marginal value to your team idea again. You're going to get higher marginal value from a very strong reliever than you are from a very strong backup. Uh, what else do we have here? Generally speaking, you want to go with 13 batters and 13 pitchers. You want to have a starter at every position on the field offensively. You want to have a backup catcher a utility infielder, a utility outfielder, and a third utility guy. Uh, generally, the idea with that player is to have them play all the positions on the field, or as many as they can, infield and outfield for sure, if possible. But if you have to choose between an outfielder and an infielder, choose the infielder. you got four infielders versus three outfielders, and you're, uh, you've are you got three infielders that tire relatively quickly versus only two outfielders. So, again, covering that infield is going to be more important. You can have that guy cover your DH slot as well, and then you've just got the outfielder covering the three outfield slots. And you also want to make sure, whatever possible, you're drafting your utility players for their fielding ability rather than their hitting ability. Uh, it's much easier to cover that fielding than it is to cover the offense. They're probably going to bat at the bottom of your lineup anyway. And... Um, the fielding will be much higher value. It'll make sure that your pitchers don't hit any extra bumps in the road. You can make up the offense with your other guys. So as for drafting by position, and this is very important, I'm going to go position by position to give you the tips I have. So for catchers, do not force yourself to draft a catcher early. Again, catcher is the position on the field that is probably the deepest, the longest. You can get high catcher ability players in the bronze round, no problem. You can even get them in the iron round every now and again. Uh, and really, you're more likely to encounter a good hitting catcher in the early rounds than a good fielding catcher. Now, if you've got somebody like uh, Tim McCarver or... Um, Miguel Montero, somebody who's a really strong fielder and a really good hitter at catcher, then it might be worth considering drafting them. But don't force yourself to reach for a catcher early just because it's a catcher. It is the position that is the deepest, the longest. You can find catchers in the bronze rounds, and being patient will pay off more often than it will hurt you with the catchers. Now, again, don't let great players like uh, McCarver slip if they are the best available. Take a catcher if it makes sense to take a catcher, but also don't push yourself to do it. Now for first base, um, first base is a position that's all about offense. Defense is basically negligible at first base, and it also falls off real fast, offense does. So 
getting a first base but early or rather getting that offense early. You have to basically draft a first baseman early if you want him to be good. But again, since that offense is the same at all the other positions, and that's dropping off round and round as well, that makes first base actually one of the least valuable positions. And you can kind of push first base down the road. If you have players of equal value, then draft those players. But again, if you come across a really good hitting first baseman, grab that first baseman if you do not have uh, better options available. But again, first base like catcher, you can kind of punt it to the bronze rounds if absolutely necessary. Now for second base, there are a lot of good second basemen through the gold rounds. There's a few in the silver rounds. And there are actually not many in the perfect and diamond rounds. So unless you get somebody like um, Jackie Robinson, it's unlikely you're going to be drafting a second baseman in the first three rounds of the draft. So generally speaking, you're going to want to target them in the gold and silver rounds. You can occasionally get one early, but it's unlikely. Gold is usually the best time to draft second baseman, but silver can be fine too. There are a couple solid silver second basemen. And obviously if you get one who's really good early, that's a good opportunity to draft them as well. Now as for third base, uh, I personally think third base defense is really heavily slept on. I think people don't, quite value it properly particularly with the arm so if you find somebody who could hit and field at third base and there are a good number of options for that in the gold and silver rounds and above as well then you want to draft them now if you find someone who does one really really well and the other decently they're not a bad pick either so you could go with them but just remember that some of the best third basemen are found in the later rounds like nolan arenado is one of the best third basemen available so uh, that silver one I referred to, not the uh, diamond live Arenado. But yeah, uh, you can find third base with a little bit later in the gold and silver rounds. So you don't have to force yourself to draft one in the first couple if you have better options. Now shortstop, I've been saying with pretty much every other position, you could wait to draft this guy. You don't have to take him early. Shortstop's the opposite. You've got to get your shortstop as soon as you possibly can. It is the position that has by far the biggest fall off between round to round. So you've got dominant guys like Arky Vaughn in the first round. But then as soon as you get to the third round, your best option is what? Chico Carrasquel? I mean, he's an okay fielder. He's much a huge step down from those top guys, but he's going to be a weaker hitter. He's basically a lower silver caliber hitter on most scales. Arky Vaughn is one of the best hitters of the game. So again, you have that offense drop off, but you also have a really heavy defense drop off at shortstop round around. By the time you get to bronze, Tim McCarver or uh, Frank Tavares is the best fielding shortstop available most of the time. You're not going to see him very often. He is terrible compared to to the uh, diamond and perfect shortstops. So if you get a shortstop in the diamond and perfect rounds and they look really good, they're almost always going to be your best choice and you definitely have got to get your shortstop as early as you possibly can. Now left field is kind of like first base. Uh, it's all offense. There is actually a little bit of defense value, though. Uh, do not sleep on what Tuck Turner, Coco Crisp, but guys like that can give you in left field. It can be a little bit of a value bump. Um, left field, you can find good left fielders really deep in the draft. There are some decent options all the way down to bronze. You could definitely find them in silver. You could definitely find them in gold. But if you get a great hitter, which there are plenty of in left field, guys like Tuck Turner, you got to get them. Those guys are definitely going to be big boosts to your team. Now, center field is a little bit less like, it's like shortstop, a little less extreme. Uh, it's got major defensive drop-offs after the first couple early rounds, and you also deal with the offense drop-offs. You almost always want to have your center fielder picked by gold, but you can still find decent center fielders in the silver rounds. So if you have to fall that far, you can kind of make it up. But again, want to draft center field as early as possible. Those silver center fielders almost always come with a huge offense drop to get that decent defense. So uh, yeah, get your center fielders early like shortstop. Right field. Again, it's like left field, but you have even more defensive value. Getting a good right fielder can really bolster your team. Somebody like Bookie Betts in the gold round. You're probably not going to take him too often in the perfect and diamond rounds. Again, like left field. But if you find a really good hitter, you go for them. If you find a great all-around player like Betts, you go for them. 
uh, but you don't push it too hard. Again, it's not as much priority as center field or shortstop. Now, DH. Almost never draft somebody to be a DH. What you're going to do is you're going to uh, just when you run into a point where you have somebody who's really good available to draft, but you already have somebody at that position, you draft them anyway, and you stick one of the players at DH, the worst fielder, the worst fielder between the two goes to the DH spot. You don't draft somebody to be a DH, you move somebody to DH once you find somebody at their position, and uh, you really need to take them. Now, by the time you get into those deeper silver rounds and you're really worried about... Um, about missing out on a bat, not having a DH. At that point, you look at drafting some guys who are just pure hitters. But unless you find somebody who's a significantly better hitter than the field, you don't draft them to be a DH. Now for starting pitchers. Starting pitching, honestly, the quality of starting pitching is pretty consistent between the diamond and silver rounds. There's not too much of a drop. It's much shallower than all the other positions. So you could still get decent pitchers in silver if you're a little bit lucky. You could definitely get them in gold. That's really where you want to target them, the gold and silver rounds, because you're not wasting some really top-tier hitters, but you're still getting really strong pitching. Now, once you hit the bronze rounds, starting pitcher hits a cliff and falls hard. You do not see many good bronze starting pitchers at all, and uh, you're very lucky to have one encountered. There is a massive amount of bronze cards out there, and almost none of the starting pitchers are at decent at all. Now, relief pitchers. I've already talked about this a little bit. They have the lowest quality drop-off between rounds. The difference between a diamond or gold starting pitcher and a bronze starting, or reliever, rather, is uh, just not that much. So, again, the bronze round is where you want to take your relievers. You're going to get some decent guys still, and you're not wasting the talent that you can use on more important positions. All right, well, that's just about it for my major overarching tips, so let's get into it. We're going to do two perfect drafts. I'll just talk about my strategy and what I'm thinking as we go through. All right, so round one. I see we've got a right fielder, Martin DeHiggio, but I also know that Martin DeHiggio is a center fielder. Now, I was talking about how important center field is, but I'm also talking about getting the best player relative to their position. DeHiggio's offense is not really convincing me. He's an okay at best hitter. So we're going to come back to him, but he is on the table. Now, next, I see we've got Eno Slaughter. Now, this is a right fielder who can really field his position. He's a good hitter. He's a solid overall player. So, again, I'm liking Slaughter better than DeHiggio. I'm unlikely to go with DeHiggio. Clements, he's a pitcher. He doesn't even look that great to me, so I'm just going to pass on him completely. Next, we've got Jeff Bagwell. Now, Bagwell's probably a slightly better hitter. Uh, than Slaughter, although he does have lower avoid Ks, which is a little bit scary. He is a first baseman. So, again, first base defense, not really going to add much value, but Slaughter's right field defense is going to add value to his profile. So, while I think Bagwell might be a slightly better hitter overall, I'm still leaning Slaughter because he has that defense. Norm Cash, he looks like he's just the worst Jeff Bagwell, so I have absolutely no interest. And next we've got Bobby Doer. He looks like he's a solid hitter, maybe not quite on par with Slaughter, maybe like a slightly worse Slaughter, but he's also a second baseman who could field his position all right. Now, I think that Doer's defensive profile is not necessarily the best built, and we know that we can find second baseman in later rounds who are going to be pretty strong, so I think we're going with Slaughter here. Another thing to consider with Slaughter is he can play left field pretty well, so if we need to slide him over to left field because we draft another strong right fielder, we can, and that's the versatility that we're really liking in these rounds. I talked about drafting shortstops early. Joe Cronin is not necessarily the one you want to go for. And this is what you got to watch out for. Do not draft poor fielding shortstops, especially in the early rounds. This is not a guy who can hit particularly well either. A reliever, Enrique Romo. I'm going to pass on him completely. Ron Say, he's a third baseman. He's an okay hitter, but he's not a great fielder. He's not really too good at either, so I'm not liking Ron Say too much. Buck Freeman. He looks like he's a pretty good hitter. He's a solid first base, but he's definitely somebody I'd consider drafting here. Next, we've got J.J. Blade. Now, Blade looks like he's a right fielder, so we'd have to move Slaughter if we drafted him to left field. Um, he's a good hitter. I think he's probably about on par with Buck Freeman overall. And, yeah, I think, I think Blade is fine. And now we've got Randy Reddy. Now, he plays three positions, but he's really only a third base with a left fielder. I'm not loving the second base defense too much. He's a solid hitter overall, and I think he could add to our team. 
it looks like he's pretty splitty, which is good for a righty because it means he could crush lefties without sacrificing too much VR. Now we're going to compare him to Buck Freeman here. I think those are the two best choices. It looks like Reddy's going to be much better at getting on base. He's got a really strong eye, similar avoid case, similar contact, and that 15-point eye difference is going to be significant. But Buck Freeman has almost a 30-point power advantage, and I don't really care too much for Randy Reddy's 25-point or so gap power advantage. So it really is going to come down to uh, Randy Reddy's inability to hit for power. And while I think Reddy's uh, ability to play third base and left field is valuable. Let's actually take a look at his defense. So he's not a great rangy left fielder. I don't really like that. Now Buck Freeman is a very strong hitter. He's a lefty. Ultimately, I think we're going to go with Randy Reddy. His defense, his defensive versatility kind of puts him over the edge for me. We're going to leave him at third base for now, but we'll move him around if needed. Now, this is going to be a tough round. I can already tell because we've got two great players. We've got Christian Pache, who is a center fielder, and I was talking about how important center field is. He's not the worst hitter in the world. He's not great either, though, but his 103 outfield range is something you're not going to find in most rounds later. He is a great center fielder. And the other thing is Luis Aparicio, who's a great fielding shortstop. He's got significantly good uh, infield range at 85, error at 97, arm at 76, and turn double plays at 95. He runs the bases well. He gets on base. He's a much better hitter than Christian Pache. I've also got here Julio Rodriguez. He's not great at getting on base, so we're immediately going to throw him out. Royce Lewis, another shortstop. I don't think he's as good as Aparicio, so I'm going to take him out as well. Billy Wagner, he's a reliever. Dennis Eckersley, also a reliever. So it's down to uh, Pache and Aparicio. And I'm having a tough time choosing here. It is really difficult to make a decision between these two guys. So I think we're going to compare them. Aparicio just has an all-around batting advantage. Pache's got more power, but that's really about it. And power it does not hold up against um, this on-base ability. Aparicio is also a better base runner. Defensively, I think shortstop is going to be harder to fill later than uh, center field. We can find center fielders in the gold rounds and in the silver rounds, so I think we're going to go with Aparicio here. And looking at this round, we've got Clark Schmidt, who's a really solid starting pitcher. I like him a lot, so he's definitely going to be an option. Carson Kelly. Now, we don't have to push ourselves to draft catching, so we might not go with him, but he's got 81 ability. He's a solid fielder overall. Definitely an interesting player. We've got John Wilson. I don't like him too much. Colin McHugh, who's actually a starting pitcher in disguise. And this is that guy's out of position thing I was talking about. Uh, he's not necessarily somebody I'm loving too much here, but he is definitely at least somebody I'd consider, given that he does have really strong stuff, solid movement, solid control, and could be a decent starting pitcher if we didn't have any other options. Now, I've also got Dave Bush here. Well, I'm actually liking better. He's got strong stuff and control with decent movement. We've got Andy Carey. Brian Dozier is an okay second baseman. But we can do better than him. Logan Forsyth, another mediocre player. He's also got first base eligibility, though, which is something I would consider. Although I'm still not interested in drafting him. I think we're going to take two pitchers here. I like Clark Schmidt a whole lot, so he's definitely going on. And actually, you know, I think Paulo Duca plays first base, too. So that makes him a little more interesting because, again, he's a worst-case scenario catcher, and we could always throw him to first base. But at the same time, I like catch, uh, Carson Kelly's defense, so if we were taking a catcher, it would probably be him. But I'm thinking we're going with David Bush here instead. All right, so we've got Kyron Paris, who's got eligibility at second base and shortstop. He's a solid on-base profile. He's a great fielding second baseman. I think it's likely we're drafting him. Steve O'Neill, a decent fielding catcher who's got a pretty good bat, too. And here we go, Jim Pearsall. So we did take Pache, but here's another decent defensive center fielder, 83 range, 97 arm, 81, or air rather, 61 arm. He can get on base. He has good contact. So we're probably going to draft him as well. If we were going for a DH this round, George Valera would be somebody I'd consider, but uh, we got two hitters, so I don't see a reason to do it. Phil Mossy, another pretty good catcher. He's got good catcher ability and a solid bat. Cade Cavalli, another one of those future legend pitchers. You'll notice that those types of pitchers, the future legends, are going to be really strong. San 
Stan Musial is an outstanding hitter. He definitely manages to pile up a great on-base percentage and batting average. We don't currently have left field uh, filled yet, so he can temporarily slot in there if we find a better fielder that he'll go to DH. All right, Eric Caros. I'm not liking the bat too much. We already have a second baseman, so I'm not too keen on the idea of drafting Adam Kennedy. Jeffrey Leonard's not too good. Fred Hutchinson's not too good. So that really leaves us with one option, and that is Mike Zunino. He's not my ideal catcher. I don't like drafting guys who can't really get on base. I'd prefer a good hitter uh, at this point in the draft. But he's a good fielding catcher, and there's just nobody that really beats him, in my opinion. So this is a situation where I'll draft Mike Zunino because there's no decent options, and he is a solid player overall. All right, so we've got Jim Poole here. I'm not liking his on-base abilities, he or lack thereof. George Shuba's not too bad overall. Steve Garvey, it looks like he's... Eh, it's. I'm not liking the eye, but overall, Steve Garvey is a pretty solid hitter, and I would consider taking him. We do still need a first baseman. Tucker Barnhart, another strong defensive catcher. Chris Flexen. He's okay. Marv Owen, eh. I think we're taking Steve Garvey to be our first baseman at this point. I'm not liking George Shuba too much. I think we're actually going to go with Tucker Barnhart to be our backup catcher, which would make him the wild card selection. Um, that would limit our ability to take a bit. Wait, Dave Engel plays other positions, doesn't he? He's a right fielder as well. But Slaughter's already in right, so we don't really need him. And uh, this is why you view players' profiles directly, so you can notice things like that. But I'm not liking him too much. Now, we could take Chris Flexen, which I'm not totally opposed to. He's got stuff and control. He'll give up more home runs than I'd like him to. But he's not a bad pitcher. He's got a decent four-pitch mix. He's got stamina. Could also go with Irish Busiel. He looks a lot like um, Steve Garvey. He'd have to be our DH, though, and I would ideally like to move Stan Musial to DH. I don't like Adelise Garcia. At least not his batting. His defense isn't going to play, though, either. I don't see any options I'm too thrilled about. I think we're kind of back to do a corner here, and I've got to take Chris Flexen. Here we go, Andrew Vaughn. Andrew Vaughn's a solid hitter. He can play first base and left field. He's not a great fielder in left, but he can do it. G. Walker could play left field, and he is definitely a better fielder than Stan Musial. I would consider drafting Walker for sure. Fausto Carmona, he's a solid pitcher. He's got really nice movement, which I like a lot. We've got Billy Cox. Now, another thing we could do is take a third baseman and move Randy Reddy to left field. I like Cox a lot. He is a solid defensive third baseman. He hits really well. That 69 arm is probably about on par with Randy Reddy's 72. I think overall they're pretty similar players. Hedbert Perret, or Perry, rather. He's, eh, he's a first baseman, really, to me. He's not terrible, but he's not great. Walt Morin's not bad. While I would consider in a vacuum drafting Fausto Carmona, I think this one's going to come down to G. Walker and Billy Cox. Or actually, you know, because we're only drafting one, we will draft Fausto Carmona and one of these two guys as well. So we're going to compare them. It looks like Billy Cox is slightly better on base. And G. Walker is a better power hitter. So I want to take a look at what we've got and figure out what is going to complement our lineup best. Um, they're both right-handed batters. G. Walker barely has any splits, though. And Billy Cox has larger splits. He hits lefties better. So we'll see if we're weak against lefties, maybe. Steve Garvey's left-handed for a right-handed first baseman. Right-handed, 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 left-handed, right-handed. So basically our entire team is left-handed, or right-handed rather. So while I do overall quite like Billy Cox, 
I think we're going to go with G. Walker here. I think he's probably going to be a slightly better option for both our defense and our uh, current situation. So in this round, we're drafting our wild card player and our last starting pitcher, hopefully. Interesting. Willie Horton, not a bad hitter. Dick Drago is probably going to be our pitcher. I like him a lot. He's got decent movement, strong control, good stamina, too, is a little bit of a bonus. Now, we could take Chris Taylor as our wild card. He plays a lot of positions. He's an okay hitter. We could also take a reliever. Somebody like uh, Ben Flowers wouldn't be too bad. I'd like to do somebody better, but I don't really know if we've got anything here. Maybe Dennis Kinney. Yeah, we don't even have any other starting pitchers, so it's got to be either Matt Wilcox, who I'm not a fan of, or Dick Drago. And I do like Drago well enough to take him here for sure. So I'm not a huge fan of Ben Flowers or Dennis Kinney. That kind of makes us difficult because I would prefer to draft a reliever to a, a utility guy. But I guess if Chris Taylor is going to be our super utility guy and he's going to start basically all the time, we could go with him. All right. Now we're looking primarily for relievers at this point. Lee Gut or Guterman. Here's a strong reliever, and remember why I said when you get to this point in the draft, you're taking strong relievers if they come up. Lee Guterman fits that profile. He's definitely coming to our team. Now, I'm not seeing any other pitchers I love, so we're going to take a look at the position players and see if any would make decent backups. So Hayward Sullivan looks like he can get on base, and he's not a bad backup catcher slash first baseman. John Lowenstein, second base, third base, and the corner outfield spots. I don't know if we've got anyone who can cover center. Well, we got Chris Taylor. Chris Taylor can play center field. So John Lowenstein is a pretty good hitter for this point in the draft. I wouldn't mind taking him. Jimmy Outlaw, that's a name. He could play the outfield and third base, so I actually like him a little bit better. Rick Burleson, not a bad shortstop. Could also play second. I think we're going with Jimmy Outlaw, though. All right, Joey Lucchese's not bad, so we could potentially look at him as a long reliever. Jim Constable is a solid reliever. Going to pick him up here. I don't see any other pitchers that I love too much, so I think it's probably going to be Joey Lucchese here. Ryan McMahon. Plays first, second, and th third. I want to get a shortstop as our last utility and or utility guy. I'm not a huge fan. Frank Isbell is really fast, man. Bill Hunnefield, he plays short and second. I'm not a huge fan of the Casey's movement, but that changeup is going to play up in the bullpen. Or rather, his three-pitch mix will hurt him less in the bullpen. I think we're still going to go with Hunnefield, though. And we're drafting exclusively pitchers from here on out. Bob McClure, solid reliever. I'm going to throw him on there for now. I'm not in love with these other options here. We've got Ike Camp, who's... He's all right. I guess we could take him as well. He's The lower control doesn't make me happy, but he's got solid stuff and movement, which kind of makes up for it. All right, now in the iron rounds, again, unless you're getting a really strong iron reliever, which you will not see very often, you almost exclusively want to take depth for your iron backups. Now, uh, I do really like Lurie Garcia. And again, this is why I like holding off into the iron rounds to draft utility guys, because you can get some good ones here. Jose or uh, Lurie Garcia is a very solid utility guy. Now, Jose Suarez is a solid uh, long reliever. I also like Keegan Thompson as a long reliever. Riley Smith could do it, but I want to take a look at some of the other guys first. All right, I think we're going Riley Smith. I like Tyler Alexander. He's got good, really good control, and I'll talk about in a little bit why it's so good to have such strong control. While we could go with Ashton Goudeau, I think we're going with Michael Givens here, who has stronger stuff overall. All right, and now we're going to actually build the roster here. 
I'm just going to give you basic tips on how to set this because unless you're doing daily or weekly perfect drafts, it doesn't often make sense to do this because it's so time consuming relative to things. So first thing we're going to do, oh shoot, I just realized we forgot to take a backup catcher. So uh, this is a very big mistake on my part. You cannot go without a backup catcher or you're basically at a 0% chance of winning. We'd have to essentially sweep our way through all of the rounds in order to win. Chris Taylor is a live player, so we can hypothetically stick him in as our backup catcher. Actually, he's not even good enough to be a backup catcher, so that is not a viable option. I should have taken that backup catcher first base because we didn't even get a first base backup either. So I kind of blew it with the utility guys. Um, that's something I would definitely not recommend you do. So we're going to kind of leave the depth charts as they are, but normally you're going to want to go in and just quickly set the depth charts and lineups. Um, I will do that with the next team where I will not forget to draft a backup catcher, hopefully. Our pitching staff looks good. You do want to come in and quickly just make sure that all the starting pitchers are the guys you want to be the starting pitchers and the AI hasn't done anything weird. Now for team strategy, you want to just take a quick sample of your team. So Mike Zunino, not fast. Steve Garvey, not terribly fast. Paris doesn't have a very good base running profile. Outlaw's not fast. Reddy's not fast. Aparicio's fast, but not too fast. Hunterfield's got a bad base running profile. Taylor's fast. Uh, Mugil is not. Walker is kind of fast, but not too fast. Pearsall is kind of fast, but not too fast. Slaughter is not fast. So generally speaking, we don't have a lot of base tours. We're going to set this low. We're going to set base running low as well. And hit and run as well. I like hit and run one tick above stealing, by the way, since it's basically stealing, but with a higher success rate, and uh, there are other things to it too, but you're almost always going to want to set your bunting to the absolute lowest levels, because um, bunting is just not, its it does not do much. Now we're going to take a quick sample of our pitching. Do we have a lot of control or a lot of movement on our staff? Schmidt has more control. Bush has more control. Carmona's got more uh, movement. Drago has more control. Flexen has more control. McClure has more movement. Camp has more movement. Guterman has more control. Constable's about even. Smith has more control. Alexander has more control. Givens has, well, it's close, but more control. Thompson's got more control, and Suarez is even. So generally, we've got more control than movement, so we want to set our pitch rounds to slightly more frequent. Basically, what pitch round does is if you turn that up, you're sacrificing uh, control for movement. And control and stuff, slight amounts of control and stuff. So you'll strike out fewer batters, you'll walk fewer, or you'll walk more batters, but you'll also give up fewer home runs if you set pitch around higher. Now, if you set it lower, that uh, increases your home run rate, but it drops your strikeout rate and walk rate. For higher control guys, it doesn't actually increase the walk rate that much, but it does still drop the home run rate. So it's good to pitch around if you've got guys with weaker movement and higher control. Now, intentional walk, we almost never want to do that. Hold runners, we want to do that because that's basically just going to limit steals. We do not really want to play our infield in. That'll limit the number of outs we record. We don't want to play our, uh, play our corners in. That's also going to limit the number of outs we can record. We don't want to guard the lines. That's going to limit the number of outs we can record. We do want to shift. We also want to outfield shift, and we want to shift our outfield depth as well. We want to slowly hook our starting pitchers, because remember, we took higher quality starting pitchers, but also we want to make sure the AI isn't taking them out too early and burning the bullpen. However, we want to hook our relievers quickly. We've got plenty of relievers, and we don't want to leave guys in for too long at all once they're on lower stamina. We do want to prefer our right versus left pitching matchups, but we're not really pinch hitting. Our best guys are our best guys. They're just going to play all the time, so we're going to set that to don't care at all. We're not going to pinch hit for anybody, and we're rarely using pitch runners. The guys that we've got in the lineup, because it's perfect draft and they scales down, are the best guys available. We do not really want to use substitutions. Now, um, you can set individual player strategy as well, but I'm not really going to cover that here. At this point, you just submit your team with the changes you've made, and you can go on. So next, we are going to do one more perfect draft on my primary account. And um, this time I'll cover setting your depth charts and such. And I'll once again go over my decisions just to give you a different look at a different set of players drafted. All right, so we're going to start our drafting. And here we've got two starting pitchers, Bill Dickey. 
who is currently probably the strongest uh, starting catcher in the game. He's got really good fielding and is a very strong left-handed hitter. Eddie Murray, he's basically like a first base Bill Dickey, but uh, no, not really. He's a right or switch hitter, rather. He's interesting. Rico Petroselli, and while I did say shortstop's important, he doesn't really have the defense we're looking for, also not the best hitter. And Joe Gordon. All right, so this is interesting. Um, Bill Dickey is really good, but so is Joe Gordon. He's got great fielding at second base, high turned out plays and range with solid air and arm. He hits pretty well, but he is a righty. He crushes lefties. Bill Dickey is a left-handed hitting catcher with a really high catcher ability at 106. He crushes righties and is still strong against lefties. We're going to go with Dickey because uh, catching, his catching defense just gives him a ton of value. All right, now we're going to throw out the pitchers in this round for now. Carlos Ruiz, another catcher. So he's good. If we didn't have Dickey, he'd be somebody I'd consider. But again, we've got our starting catcher already. Harry Heilman is a ridiculously good hitter. He's probably our DH, though, if we take him. But man, does he rake. He absolutely crushes left-handed pitching and is really strong V-right as well. Ed Bailey, yet another catcher. Don't have any interest in him. And everyone else is pitcher, so it's got to be Heilman here. He's just such a good hitter. You don't really want to pass on him. Miguel Tejada here. So here's a good shortstop option. Tejada's got range. He's also a very good fielder overall. If we draft another shortstop, he's versatile. He's got that. That's another check on the box. He plays third as well. He's a good hitter. He hits really well. He's got power. He's got gap. He's got uh, strikeouts and Babbitt. And he is a splitty righty, which basically just means that he crushes lefties without sacrificing much versus righties. We've also got Robinson Cano here, who's an okay second baseman. Carl Crawford, who's a solid left fielder, but again, not really a standout player at this point, and some pitchers. So going with Tejada for sure. Now, in this round, we've got Ken Keltner is interesting to me. He's a third baseman. He hits pretty well, but the fielding's not really there. Aaron Harang is definitely a strong pitcher. He's got a fastball change or slider changeup combination, rather, which are the two best pitches for striking guys out in the game. Really strong stuff, really strong control, so we can crank the pitch around for him, and he looks good overall. Chris Holt, another solid pitcher. He's got very high movement, so we'll consider him. Brian Hayes. Now, you want to talk about a third baseman who hits and fields. He is definitely going to fit that bill. He's not the best hitter, but he's got a lot of gap, and he does field very well at third base. George Calmers, another solid starting pitcher. Andrew McCutcheon, not too good. Edwin Encarnacion, very power-heavy first baseman. I don't really like him. Honestly, I think it's Cabrian Hayes here. I really like his third base defense, as I like defense everywhere, but especially first base, so he'll be an interesting selection here. Cliff Floyd, a very good hitting left fielder. I think we'll consider him strongly. Now, Moise, or uh, rather, Biz Mackey, another great catcher. We already have Bill Dickey, so I'm not too strongly going to consider him. He'd have to be a backup. Moises Alou is a great hitter. He is... Uh, a guy a lot of people start in gold tournaments. I'm almost certainly going to draft him here. Earl Hamilton's not a bad pitcher, but again, we've got Cliff Floyd, who's really good. So you've got to beat that at this point if you want to make the team. Tim Salmon, I think we're going to compare him to Cliff Floyd here just to get an idea of who's better. I definitely like Cliff Floyd better. Willie Upshaw, not a bad first baseman, but again, I'm all about Floyd here. He is an outstanding hitter. Now, in a neutral environment where we don't have Bill Dickey, I'd probably consider Biz Mackey here, but um, it's not really much of a question for me given our current circumstance. Now, Moises Alou, Harry Heilman, both right fielders. Alou's a better fielder, so Heilman will go to DH. And Alou will stay in right. Floyd will be our left fielder. Sammy Hughes, here's a great second baseman. He fields really well, and he can get on base as well, so almost certainly going to be selecting him. It's a shame that we took Hayes almost because Billy Johnson is a great fielding third baseman as well who can hit quite well. Jimmy Nelson's actually a starting pitcher. I'm not liking him too much. It's almost a shame we filled our outfield up because I do like Vin uh, Campbell light up quite a bit. And shoot, Stan Bujol, I... Can't, I almost can't miss out on Stan Musial, honestly. Heilman could technically play first base. First base does not really matter. I'm genuinely tempted to draft Stan Musial and just put Heilman at first base. Oh man, he, re he really cannot play first base. But again, as much as I 
there's just nobody else that really stands out to me here. Jade's Paxton, not a bad option, but we don't really have anybody who's a great option. And Stan Musial is a great option. We're going to have to do it. So Musial, actually, maybe he can play first base a little better. Nope. We're going to stick Heilman at first base. He'll be our starting first baseman now. Cole Henry, an outstanding silver starting pitcher. So I'm almost certainly going to be taking him here. Tim Raines, another great hitter. What we really need is a center fielder at this point. Charles Nagy, not a bad pitcher either. Joba Chamberlain, easily the best silver reliever. Um, if you pick, if you see him like him or Raphael Betancourt for the gold rounds, that's somebody you actually consider drafting if you don't have strong options elsewhere. Sergio Mitre is another good pitcher. I think he's probably my favorite option at this point. And yeah, we're going to go with Sergio Mitre here. So take it up two pitchers in this round. Pepper Martin, he is a center fielder, but he does not have defense, and we really need it playing Cliff Floyd and Moises Alou in the corners. So uh, getting a strong ranged center fielder is going to be a priority. What do we still need here? We've got catcher, all the infield. We just need center field pitching. Okay, so our pitcher is here. I'm not loving it. I'm not loving it. Wade Miley's probably the best pitcher we've got available. The only other starting pitcher is Jack Kralik, who he's not very good. He's an understated silver pitcher, which I don't like very much. But I, I honestly don't even think we have a choice here. We've got to go with these two just because we really need to fill our team and there's no better choices. If we're lucky, maybe we'll get some better pitchers and be able to move them to the bullpen. I really like this Martin Perdot. This is a really good hitting right-hander that I think we could maybe like, because Bujol has splits. So maybe what we do is we start him versus righties, put Heilman at DH then, and put start Musial versus lefties, move Heilman to first where he will suck. So I will consider doing that. And the other thing we really need here in addition to our wild card is center field, but I just don't see it. Now we do also have Josh Bell here. But he also he's a switch hitter, but he's really a, a left-handed hitter. He's very much stronger versus righties. So that kind of detracts from his value to me. We've got Colby Lewis, so there's a starting pitcher. Actually, we don't need a starting pitcher, do we? Yeah, we've got all five pitchers, so we just need a center fielder. That's really what we need, but we don't have it. I really like Aaron Loop. He's a great reliever, so I will consider drafting him. All right, we're going with Loop and Prado, and we'll do that thing I discussed. All right, what do we have here? Ooh, Ray Moss. Here's a solid bronze pitcher. He's got a lot of movement. He's got a slider, which I like quite a bit. Jerry Reed is a strong reliever. Connor Wong looks really short in that pitcher. We still need a center. Yes! Hallelujah! We've got Kevin Kiermeyer. Okay, this is a miracle of the bronze rounds. Kevin Kiermeyer is about the best you can ask for. He's a rangy center fielder at 83 range. He's not the worst hitter in the world. Man, you can't get much better than that. All right, so we got a couple strong relievers here, Lefferts and Reed. I don't know if either of them are worth drafting over Moss, who's got stamina to go with him, a lot of stamina to go with him. So I think we'll go with Moss. All right, Philip Evans, I believe, plays a lot of positions. Not terribly well, but he does play a lot of positions. We do already have one utility guy, though, because that's technically what we're counting Prado as, even though he will be playing first base in a platoon role. All right, what else do we have here? Bobby Valentin, he can hit. He also plays center field. He's another utility guy. I think he could be our super utility guy. I like Bobby Valentin quite a bit here. All right, we've got Rick Manning as well. He could be our utility outfielder. Let me just double check that Bobby Valentin covers all the positions that Martin Prado does not. So he needs to play shortstop if he's covering all the positions. He does play shortstop. Okay. 
So we can here just take our last two utility guys. We're going relievers the rest of the way if we do this. I don't see any relievers I really like, so that's what we will go with. We still need a backup catcher. Please, please actually let me draft a backup catcher this time. Um, and just relievers the rest of the way. So I like this guy. This is another strong reliever. Definitely going to go with him. Jimmy Cordero looks like he's pretty good. I like Ivy Andrews a lot. He's a good pitcher. All right, we're going to go with Ivy Andrews here. He's got stamina as well. So hopefully we'll see another catcher soon, a good catcher. William Contreras. All right, it could be worse. Contreras has got decent fielding. He's not a good hitter, but he's a decent fielder. And again, we've got another good utility man here in Gerard Dyson. Honestly, not bad starting center fielder either with 71 position rating on the back of his 81 range. Great base running too, and he gets on base. So yeah, that's what I'm talking about when I say good... Um, Utility guys in the later rounds. Cody Reed, not a bad reliever, actually, surprisingly enough. Ansel Robles, I'm surprised he's fallen so far. I think we're going to go here. I like Chris Davinsky. He's got a little stamina, very strong control and stuff, so we'll go with him. And I think these two guys as well. And leave Charlie Sproul off the draft boards. All right, now this time we're going to actually manage our roster and look at player-by-player player, um, strategies. I'll make a separate video on strategies. This is just about what you're doing for perfect drafts. So again, I really only recommend doing this if you're doing like daily or weekly perfect drafts because, um, or actually we'll just set rosters. We're going to ignore strategies this time. So we've got our starting five guys that we expected to have. There are the players that we wanted there. I actually like Mitre better than Miley, so I'm going to swap them in the rotation. Now, we got a couple of higher stamina bronze relievers here in Andrews and Moss. Loop is definitely our best reliever. He's got four pitches, so we're going to actually set him as a stopper here and high leverage. I think Moss is probably... No, I like Andrews a little bit better because you're uh, swapping out stuff for movement. And we'll use Moss as a more often used middle reliever, which basically just means he's going to get higher or a larger number of opportunities than the rest of our middle relievers. I don't like this guy as a more used middle reliever. We got Chris Davinsky. He could be a long reliever, secondary role. I want to check Cody Reed's ratings to see if he actually should be. Oh, yeah, he could be a specialist. No doubt about that. All right. I think this line or that rotation and such looks good. I do not like the idea of Kevin Kiermaier batting lead off. He definitely should not be. Cliff Floyd, he can probably bat lead off versus righties. We'll see about it. Martin Perdue will be who are they putting on the bench? Musial. Yeah, versus righties. Martin Perdue is actually not playing. He will be benched versus righties. Musial We'll get into the lineup instead. So Harry Heilman going to back up there and actually start, of course, versus right-handers. Heilman will back up DH. Or actually, you know what? Here's an easier way to do this. We're going to clear all depth charts and lineups and just build it manually because I don't think the AI does a very good job building lineups. All right, so let's see who we want batting leadoff here. Our selection of the perfect drive was Bill Dickey. He absolutely demolishes right-handers, but it's also in the power as much as it is in the on-base ability. So he's probably not batting leadoff. I could make a case for Musial. He gets on base a lot. I can see arguments for potentially Heilman as well, but frankly, I think we're going Musial here. Maybe Floyd? Nah, Musial's got a better eye. Musial will bat lead off. Dickey will bat second. He absolutely crushes right-handed pitching. I want a right-hander batting third. That'll be Heilman. I think Cliff Floyd bats fourth. Miguel Tejada is just an all-around great hitter, so he's probably going fifth here. Alou, another all-around just absolutely outstanding hitter. He'll bat here. Okay, who do we still have? Sammy Hughes. He's a good hitter, but more so versus left than versus right. 
Hayes is still on the bench as well, so he'll slot in there, and Kiermaier will obviously be batting night. I don't know why they had our worst hitter batting leadoff. That just makes no sense to me. But this is a pretty strong lineup. We've got some good hitters. Now for the bench, we're going to have William Contreras, obviously, backup catcher. Prado will be our primary backup at first base and second base, as well as yeah, we're going to have Heilman backup DH. And we'll have Bujol... Musial back up maybe left field. Yeah, I guess we can have him back up left field. Rick Manning will back up those center field and right field. Valentin will back up third base and shortstop, which he is not too good at, but hey, he's a good hitter, so could be worse. Okay. So now, looking at this one more time, we're going to set our secondary backups as well. So that's going to be Rick Manning for left field. Valentin will be the secondary backup in center. Valentin will also be the secondary backup at second base. And I think that's everywhere we need to set. Yeah, all right. So we're going to copy the lineup and just paste it versus left. The only platoon we've got, which you're not, you're really never going to see platoons in perfect draft. This is just because of how wonky ours ended up. We're going to be sticking in Heilman, or rather Prado, for Mugil. Heilman will back up first base. Mugil will back up left field. And now we're going to change the depth chart slightly so Mugil gets as many starts as possible. He'll back up right field and left field. And Rick Manning will be our secondary backup for right field in this situation. So we still want Mujil getting into games. And now we got to adjust our lineup to be for versus lefties. Bordeaux's a good hitter versus left, but I don't think he's starting or batting leadoff, rather. I'm not entirely sure who we should have bat leadoff, in all honesty. Um, we got some good options. I like Alou. I like Tejada. Tejada really crushes lefties. We got Heilman as well. You know, Heilman just demolishes left-handed pitching. That's that's something. So we've got Heilman, Tejada, Alou. I think Heilman bats lead off. Tejada bats second. Alou bats third. Maybe Prudhoe's still... No, Dickey should be batting above Prudhoe. Sammy Hughes is probably hitting much further up. Oh, actually, he's not as splitty as I thought. A little bit stronger versus lefties. He's probably better than Floyd. No, Floyd's still probably better than Hughes. Maybe Hayes is splitty. Nope, okay. I think we can leave the lineup as it stands. This looks good to me. Oh, right. Want to use Stan Musial as a pinch hitter as well. All right, I'm not going to bother saying strategy since we did that last time. So that's going to be it for this video. I hope this perfect draft tutorial was helpful for you guys. Uh, let me know what you think and let me know what kinds of things you think could be helpful for you guys uh, building your teams the first time. So yeah, I'll see you guys on the next tutorial. I hope this series is good. And yeah, bye.